Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. In this update, we're tracking this powerful upper level low that started to get its act together out in the West Coast. That's increasing the winds and the heavier rains into California. And that's gonna continue moving inland and deepen as we head into Monday night. And east to the dry line, we could see supercell thunderstorms start to fire east of that dry line out in West Texas, Western Oklahoma, Western Kansas, that could set the stage, the beginning stages of a multi-day event of severe storms across the southern and central and eventually the upper Midwest as we head through Monday into Wednesday time frame. So I appreciate all my subscribers out there. If you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in to get all my daily content on this channel. And I would love to reach 250,000 subscribers so you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's take a look at the temperatures today because it's actually a really nice day. So if you live along the coast, you're actually experiencing some, some cooler conditions. We're seeing 50s and 60s for high temperatures off the West Coast, as well as in portions of the upper Great Lakes and into the Northeast. But it's really the middle of the country where you are expecting some pretty warm conditions out ahead of the main system. And that is more or less juicing up the air mass because those 80s spread all the way there into Missouri, back into Nebraska. We even have some 80s all the way up into South Dakota. So that tells you that's plenty above average for this time of year. But we're definitely starting to get concerned about because we're seeing another significant system and as we get into later on this afternoon, that is going to continue to deepen down there in central California. That's going to increase the rain opportunities for them and the higher wind gusts. But it's also this is the system that's going to be traversing across the Four Corners region. But we do have a little bit of a warm front that's going to develop and move across the upper Midwest. That could renewed stage for some severe storms as we head into Sunday, because right now, the Storm Prediction Center has that warm front moving, moving across from west to east. And within that boundary, that's where we're going to be seeing some isolated to severe thunderstorms back into the Dayton region, into Columbus. But once I think you get into the Pittsburgh region right there in western Pennsylvania, I think these could be a little bit more amplified and peak heating of the afternoon. They could have some quarter size hail associated with them and some elevated 60 mile per hour wind gusts is definitely out of the question, even as far south as the Baltimore region and even in the portions of West Virginia as well. And that will actually continue to move across even northern portions of New Jersey, maybe even getting as far as far east as maybe even to Hartford as we get deeper into the afternoon time frame. So if you put it all together over the next two days, it's really across the outskirts of the country. So we have that main system coming in out, out west right now. That continues during the day tomorrow. That's gonna add to those rain showers and the wind opportunities out there into Oregon, as well as much of California there. So you can see actually it continues to move eastbound back into Nevada. Those, those rain showers decrease and the middle of the country is pretty much high and dry under that ridge of high pressure and all those warmer conditions it's not until you get that warm front as we head into Sunday, that's gonna instigate more showers and severe thunderstorm opportunities, especially as you get into Eastern portions of Ohio, uh, Northern portions of West Virginia, but especially there in Pennsylvania, could see some, some nasty supercells, maybe in the peak of the heat of the afternoon. They went through that flood, flash flood emergency just the other day. So this is the last thing they wanna see but you are gonna be seeing some severe storms as we head into a Sunday afternoon. But really the main event is gonna be starting on Monday night. We're gonna be seeing this deepening uh, trough that's gonna be coming in out off the West Coast. And as it continues, it's gonna amplify and you can see it turning uh, negatively tilted here. And that is a 93 knot upper level winds. That is gonna be screaming folks. And you got the low pressure setting up across Eastern portions of Colorado. That's going to set the stage for a, a dry line event as we head into the nighttime hour. So I do feel this is going to be a nocturnal threat. We do got some colder air loft because eventually we do have some colder air going to be building up in Canada. It's waiting for this main system to move through. Once this actually moves through, we're going to have some pretty nice weather with you know almost chillier type conditions for late April standards 
once you get into that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday time frame for next weekend. But with that cold air aloft, that's going to instigate that you're going to have some uh, big time you know, big time hell producer thunderstorms as well. So I do feel we're going to be seeing elongated boundary of could be some l larger hail, those two inch variety or stronger because those updrafts are going to be significant on Monday and likely is going to be a nighttime event because this is the dry line. This gets into that midnight time frame. So I don't think most of this activity doesn't even start until well into the evening. It could actually even be Towards that midnight time frame, we're going to likely see mid, uh, supercell thunderstorms fire along the dry line and right to the east of that powerful low pressure center that will start to, uh, you know, continue to gain strength. So definitely concerned right around western Oklahoma, western Kansas. So for big time supercell thunderstorms that could contain some very large hail, uh, damaging winds, and that isolated tornado or two further south as you get into northwest texas and as these move across into texas they are going to be running into a capping inversion you do have a strong cap so that should limit the severe threat in portions of dallas into the central texas region as those continue to move across they're going to have a hard time to develop with that stronger cap ahead but we do have that elevated risk right now we do have an, an enhanced risk for supercell thunderstorms highlighted across western Oklahoma, far northwest Texas. Those could be the biggest hell producers from this event. Further south, you're going to be definitely running into more of a capping inversion. But if you get closer to that low pressure, that's when you're not going to have that capping to, to save the day, more or less. All systems go with all, all, uh, all fires, you know, with all uh, mechanisms in place to produce towering supercell thunderstorms and unfortunately, this is going to be a nocturnal event. So it's likely going to be forming east of the dry line here, setting up across Nebraska into much of Kansas, into central and Oklahoma, back into the Oklahoma City region, uh, into the Tulsa region. And then these will continue to move eastbound into the overnight hours. And as it does, heading into Tuesday, I think it even becomes a little bit more significant uh, development we're going to have upscale growth. So the main low pressure is going to be highlighted across southeastern portions of South Dakota by then. So if anything, the storm threat actually lifts even further north. So I do feel even Wisconsin could be further in the action for severe storms. And then you get kind of that fishtail further south into Missouri, back into Arkansas, and then far northwest, uh, northeastern portions of texas but the low level jet is going to be screaming right around 60 knots so you're gonna have a lot of shear at the surface so i'm definitely very concerned about a, an increased tornado threat um, especially as we head into tuesday and i do feel that's going to be increased as we get further into closer in that time frame we do have a bona fide 987 uh, millibar low pressure starting to build across southeastern portions of South Dakota. And to the north of that, you're going to get the heavier rains in North Dakota and much of Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. South of that, you're going to get the amplified version of larger hail and tornadoes within this sector of Illinois back into Missouri and going down into portions of Arkansas. And I think that just continu continues likely into the overnight hours into the Chicago region as we head towards that maybe midnight time frame on Tuesday. Because if you look at the flash index right now, it still kind of insinuates you get a daytime peak heating event across Arkansas and Missouri and portions of Iowa here where the low pressure is setting up across you know, southeastern portions of South Dakota. And so the northern tier of that will get the heavier rain event. And the southern tier is all about the severe storms as we head into Tuesday night. But right now, this is what the Storm Prediction Center has. A day four risk highlighted over uh, Iowa, all of Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, and portions of northeast Texas getting into Indiana. If anything, I think this is going to be lifted further north and expanded to an, to an enhanced risk, especially for these areas into Iowa, portions of Missouri, and into Illinois as we get closer to this event. So if you look at the breakdown on some of the learning guidance and what the SBC has right now, 
a more amplified version of what we're looking at for all three mechanisms. Again, this is what we have from the Storm Prediction Center, mainly, mainly kind of matching up with the, uh, the overall learning model. But once we get into Tuesday, I think even Tuesday could even be more of a, a significant threat and maybe a, the, the highest threat comparable to Monday as we get closer to the event. So if anything, I do feel this is going to be increased at least to an enhanced risk back into Illinois, into Missouri and portions of Arkansas. And if anything, I think this spreads further north uh, from what the SBC has right now, further into Minnesota and actually further into Wisconsin as well, at least for a slight risk. And, and I do feel once we move into Wednesday, I think even portions of Ohio again, West Virginia, Indi Indiana, back into Pennsylvania, I think you'll be under the gun, a less severe threat, but still have that slight severe storms or some larger hail and isolated spin up as tornado is definitely not out of the question and definitely some gustier straight line winds for sure. As this moves across, this is your setup on Tuesday night. So I really feel the low pressure is likely setting up across southeastern portions of South Dakota by then, going into Minnesota. You've got the heavier rain event on the northern side. You've got the squall line on the southern side. So the entire state of Illinois into the overnight hours is going to get clocked with supercell thunderstorms likely. Could be a bumpy evening across Illinois. Those get into Indiana into the wee hours of the morning and further south into western, uh, western portions of Tennessee. And this will likely head into Kentucky as we get into the overnight hours and going into Wednesday, kind of the same deal. This moves across Ohio again. So I do feel we got more severe storms coming for Ohio. Not as amped up of what you've seen lately, but you're still going to get that system coming in Sunday and you get the backside system that comes in Wednesday and that'll fishtail further south into uh, Kentucky. And yes, back into portions of West Virginia and yes, back into Pennsylvania with possibly more severe storms by then. And then we have the cold front. We are going to have a colder air mass coming in on the backside. So you're going to see those cooler anomalies starting to take shape with the 40s for high temperatures coming back for the Dakotas and Minnesota and further south into Nebraska. You can see the tail end where the leading edge or where that cold front will likely be. And then, of course, further south where it hasn't impacted those areas yet. We've got widespread 80s and even trying to push the century mark there into the Arizona region because, you know, summer is not that far away, folks. But there's the cold front as we head into Friday afternoon. I think it will sweep across Texas by then. Once this comes through, it'll clear the atmosphere out. But we will be coming with some snow. Yes, I said snow on the backside for North Dakota into Minnesota and back into Wisconsin again is definitely not out of the question to see one to two, maybe possibly three inches on the on the backside of this system. And this will likely not be severe. This is just along the cold front, just additional rain showers moving through West Virginia, back into to, uh, you know, to Kentucky here, into eastern portions of Tennessee by then. And yes, more rain for you folks in Pennsylvania. And back behind that, there's the more significant colder shot of air. So everybody will likely start getting into the action by the time we hit into next weekend. This would be next Sunday. And this is fairly chilly for, you know, April 21st standards as you wake up into the 40s all the way down into Miss Mississippi, into Alabama, and a good part of Georgia, even in Oklahoma. So you're going to feel this cold front. It's still going to be freezing where they are going to be seeing some more snow further north, but even the 30s across the upper Midwest and through the Mid-Atlantic region, so you're definitely going to feel this colder air. So if we break this thing down for you over the next seven days, we've got the trough out west right now, right? That's bringing all the elevated rain, so that's going to bring some one to two inch totals back into Oregon and much of California, but definitely is going to lose its luster as it moves across into the interior regions of the Ever Mountain West, especially the Four Corners regions. There's your dry slot where it's normally at in West Texas and Oklahoma and to the Panhandle. But the low pressure is going to set up shop across uh, Kansas and maybe south, uh, eastern portions of Colorado. That's going to set the stage east of the dry line. That supercell thunderstorms definitely concerned about western Oklahoma into into uh, in Monday night. But further north where the low pressure is, 
that's where you're going to get the highest probabilities and the highest rains of at least one to possibly two, maybe three inches. And some of those areas across Iowa where they desperately need the rain. So that's actually a good thing. Back into Minnesota, as well as Wisconsin and northern Illinois. Lighter amounts as you move through Arkansas into Indiana and heading into Ohio, as well as into the Mid-Atlantic. And notice, notice one of the drier periods back into Florida. You kind of miss out on this altogether. And actually a good part of the Southeast, you don't get that system because most of the system is upscale growth and a warm front further north so you got that's mainly where the instability is going to be over the next seven days so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching if you like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update why i protect you before and after the storm